you're watching Plant Identification Through Personal Investigation with Angeline Whitmire. This is episode number one called My Interest in Plant Identification. In this episode, I share what got me started on this path of plant identification and how it has benefited me to learn plant identification skills. I invite you to visit identifythatplant.com for more plant identification resources and information about how you can develop these skills of plant identification. I grew up in Ohio, and I knew some typical weedy plants as a child, dandelion, red clover, white clover, Queen Anne's lace, and poison ivy. When I moved to the Piedmont region of North Carolina, I saw wildflowers in the woods, and I wondered what they were called. So I purchased the Eastern Region National Audubon Society Field Guide to Wildflowers, along with their Field Guide to North American Birds. I love the color photographs, which made it so easy to narrow down the possibilities and identify a plant. However, sometimes the Audubon Field Guide did not have the plant I was looking for. So I acquired another field guide with photographs. This one was called Wildflowers of North Carolina. Although I saw some other types of field guides, I really didn't like them because they were just line illustrations and the the photos were what appealed to me. I attended a week-long conference about medicinal uses of plants and participated in a couple plant walks which were offered. That's when I learned there were actually two kinds of plantain which I'd been using as a poultice for mosquito bites or bee stings. One type of plantain had narrow leaves and the other type had broad leaves. Two other edible plants I learned about on those walks were yellow wood sorrel and thistle. Another year, I signed up for a field trip associated with the Southeastern Native Plants Conference. By this time, I was really into native plants and was looking for ones that I might use in my landscape. For one of those walks, Newcomb's Wildflower Guide was highly recommended. As I tried to use that field guide, I felt frustrated with the keying system it uses, and I did not feel at all successful with the plant identification process. Along with identifying wildflowers, I began to gather books which might tell me about edible wild foods and medicinal plants. I attended a week-long herbal immersion course, and during that week I learned to identify more plants, both edible and medicinal. One plant I discovered was mugwort. When I heard that it is the eastern equivalent of the sage plant used for smudging, I was intrigued. I knew I had that plant someplace at home because I remembered pulling up fistfuls of that weed. When I returned home from the Herbal Immersion Program, I searched for and I found the mugwort. I was even more excited as I found other plants discussed during the week. Plants like spotted St. John's wort and oxeye daisy. I began eating red clover blossoms and oxeye daisy leaves whenever and wherever I saw them. I also made tinctures and oils from plants I found on my property. Now that I had the confidence that I was correctly identifying them, I went on plant walks with friends, and I found so many more plants that I did not know. With the photos I took on those plant walks, and armed with even more field guides, I had added the Peterson Field Guide to Wildflowers to my collection, I improved my plant identification skills. And gradually, I've expanded my resources in order to identify shrubs and trees and winter weeds. Currently, I use the photos I've taken and various field guides, and then some internet searches to figure out what plant I saw. Nowadays, people frequently ask me, what is this plant? More often than not, I can tell them. And if not, I take a photo or two or three or four, and I go figure it out. That's my story about how I've learned to identify plants, with the benefit of then being able to use the plant for personal medicine and first aid, for food or to create a healthy and balanced ecosystem on my property. During these podcasts, I'll be sharing the techniques I use and the resources I've located so you too can develop your plant identification skills. Visit identifythatplant.com for more plant identification resources and information about how you can confidently master these skills of correct plant identification. 
you've been watching Plant Identification Through Personal Investigation with Angeline Whitmire.